Hi, my name is Bill here at PowerStrokeHelp.com and I'm going to talk about a real serious problem that uh, I get a, a lot of emails about. It's called the death wobble. Death wobble is a situation where you're going down the road, usually at freeway speeds in one of these trucks, hit a bump or you, you go over some uneven pavement or something and the whole truck just starts to shake and all this kind of thing. And it's really, it's a really unnerving, scary experience. These three things together can cause this type of problem. Loose parts, if you have loose ball joints, tie rod ends, if the steering box is wore out and there's some slop in the front end, that can contribute to this. One of the primary pieces that wears out that can contribute to this is, besides other loose parts, is the steering dampener. It's actually a shock absorber that, that fits in the front of your uh, drag link there and keeps the front end from going into this this oscillation uh, as you're going down the road. Any, you have a big lift kit that hadn't been done correctly. Uh, there's a lot of Mickey Mouse cheap ways to lift these trucks that can contribute to this. Uh, oversized or you know tires that aren't uh, balanced correctly. I mean, I see these guys come in here with cheap steel wheels that aren't aren't uh, up to you know OEM specification, running these great big tires, and there's like nine ounces of weights on one side of the wheel. That can contribute to this. If the tires are not balanced correctly, uh, and you know it, it can contribute to this having the, the the vehicle not properly aligned. In my situation, this wasn't the case. Okay, we you know it's a. 60,000 mile vehicle, all the ball joints are tight, the steering box is tight, tires are brand new. I replaced the steering dampener on it and we still, there would be situations. So I had to really take a hard look at what was going on. We came down to this one last thing here. After all these are taken care of, what we found out was there's really not enough caster. The three measurements in alignment that we deal with is called toe, camber, and caster. If you're looking straight down from on the top of the vehicle, toe is the angle with which the tires are pointed in or pointed out. Um, you generally want to run your toe as close to zero as possible because if you tow the tires in, the, the vehicle is going to plow and it's going to eat up the, the outside edges of the tires. If you're towed out, then the inside edges of the tires are going to be damaged. Camber is if you're looking from the vehicle, like from the front of it on the ground, it's the angle of the tires as they touch the ground. In performance vehicles, you'll see a pronounced camber, uh, especially in independent rear suspension cars, that as they squat down like a Mercedes uh, or BMW or a Porsche, this causes the vehicle to be able to handle through twisty, turny roads uh, much more effectively. Camber is basically a non-issue in these trucks. It's usually set very close to zero. The one we're after is the caster. <clears throat> Think shopping cart here. As the thing goes down the road, okay, as you're pushing a shopping cart, and everybody's had a crappy shopping cart at Walmart now, and, you know, the, 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 the casters start doing like this. Well, that's a whole bunch of negative caster measurement causing that wheel to do like this, okay? It's a similar kind of idea in these trucks. <clears throat> Caster is actually a measure of an angle that off of the center, and it is the it is the axis with which the wheel turns. Okay? From the factory, these trucks come with only about one degree of of uh, of caster, and that's in my personal opinion simply not enough. Positive caster, if the vehicle is going in this direction. You know, positive caster would be the leaning back of the steering angle. The one effect is, is that as you turn the vehicle at low speeds, it's very easy. The vehicle turns easily. But at high speed, with not enough positive caster, it gets unstable. It gets wobbly, okay, which is what induces the death wobble. Not enough caster combined with some tires that are worn or shocks that are worn. And, uh, an out-of-balance tire, you hit a bump, it's the whole damn trucks comes. And it's extremely unnerving. I mean, it's, it's, it really, I get kind of upset every time it happens. So the problem is, is there's no real adjustment for caster on these trucks. But there's a solution. Being a 2010 model 4x4 pickup, this vehicle is equipped with a coil spring swing arm front suspension. That's been installed pretty much as standard equipment on these vehicles from 2005. 
excluding the excursion. Excursions never got this front end. It's too bad because it would have solved all those front end problems that those things have. The front coil suspension system is one of the best inventions that Ford ever did for these trucks. It's still standard on the latest model trucks, but there is no caster adjustment. So, some bright people out there at BD Diesel came up with this kit. That's the part number. Okay, write the part number down. <clears throat> We're going to go out to the shop now and take a quick look at what's involved with this kit. So the vehicle in question here is a 2010 F-250, uh, our latest Power Stroke Specialty Mule that we've been working with here. 66,000 mile truck. I bought this truck as a rollover uh, for just a ridiculously cheap price here. And uh, we pieced the thing back together, Humpty dumpty it back together, and uh, you know, it's turned out to be a really good vehicle. So as we get underneath the vehicle, we can see that the uh, suspension is held in here by two swing arms uh, that come forward uh, from a mount on the axle. And then there's a coil spring that suspends the vehicle. The modification that we made is we had these arms removed. We actually physically removed them both from the vehicle and installed this BD diesel kit. Now, there's a little bit involved here. I had to weld this plate on, and then there's a cam adjustment in here, and you know, little stops to keep you from, from the thing coming out of adjustment and whatnot. Uh, and it, it's actually a fairly involved process. The kit says that you can just bolt this part on and do a little tack welds, but since we had it out and we have a pretty decent Miller welder we don't use very often, we went a little crazy and just welded the whole darn bracket on there. The front end is held in by four bolts on each of these control arms here. And there's a bolt on top and a bolt on the bottom, but what we've done here by installing this kit is we've made the lower bolt, the lower mounting point, adjustable which allows the axle to be moved forward or back. By moving this lower mount forward, we change the angle of the caster, in effect adding a few degrees of total caster. Now what we found out is that with this adjusted all the way out, that we can achieve three and a half, just three and a half, 3.6 degrees. I've adjusted it back just a little bit. I'm running right at three. Uh, which seems to be extremely stable at, uh, at highway speeds. I mean, the, the steering wheel is absolutely rock solid. Now, I sent it in to have it aligned, but I told the technician that I wanted three degrees of caster instead of the factory mandated one degree. This took all of that shimmy out of the front end. Now, in a parking lot, slow speed situations, there's a little more effort to turn. But you know what? They got power steering on this truck. I, I don't, that didn't really bother me. But at freeway speeds, this truck is absolutely rock solid. And this is why. Changing the, the caster adjustment from one degree to three degrees made all the difference in how this vehicle tracks down the road.